Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Today we're bringing you a roundup of the must-see exhibitions on show in Paris this summer. The Kiss, The Thinker and The Burgers of Calais, bronze and marble brought to life thanks to the immense talent of sculptor Auguste Rodin. Now, a hundred years after the French artist's death, a special exhibition puts his career in context here at Paris's Grand Palais. Making a splash in the French capital, British painter David Hockney pulls the crowds with a retrospective taking in almost six decades of creative output. And brush strokes that built the schools of Fauvism and Cubism, Paul Cézanne is being celebrated at the Musée d'Orsay with a show of his impressive collection of portraits. His art is said to have brought emotional complexity to stone and bronze. The sculptures of Auguste Rodin have become iconic works that are instantly recognisable, from the pensive pose of the thinker to the romantic flourish of the kiss. The French artist died in 1917, and to mark that anniversary, a joint exhibition here in Paris is taking a look back at his creative universe. With more than 200 pieces on display, there's also work from the artists he influenced. France 24's Yves Jackson went to check it out. The Burgers of Calais captures the moment the French town surrendered to the English king of the 14th century. It portrays the martyr-like sacrifice of six of Calais' wealthiest men. The Age of Bronze, inspired by a young Belgian soldier, caused a scandal when it was first shown. The artist was accused of having used a life cast of his sitter and the thinker, loved by his artist friend Monet, but described by some as a gorilla and an enormous brute. This sculpture has come to be seen as the incarnation of human thought. And here's their creator, perhaps one of the world's most famous sculptors, immortalized by his muse and lover, Camille Claudel. Rodin, born in Paris in 1840, died 100 years ago, during the First World War. Catherine Chevier, you're the curator of this exhibition. Many of Rodin's works were misunderstood, but the Bézé, the kiss, was an instant success. Why was that? In the past, when Paolo and Francesco were portrayed, they were shown as two characters of the Divine Comedy, in period costumes or in an easily identifiable context. Rodin presented these two figures naked, which actually wasn't that shocking at the time. It came to represent the universal kiss. With more than 200 works by Rodin, the exhibition also shows sculptures and drawings by artists he influenced, including Bordel, Picasso, Matisse, Basilitz, Gormley and Giacometti. Auguste Rodin died in 1917. He was the most famous and most financially successful artist in all of the world. A century on, this exhibition and others across the globe, from Adelaide to Germany to San Francisco, aim to shed light on one of the most complex and ever-changing personalities in the history of art. Moving to a contemporary artist now who, at 80 years old, is still very much at the top of his game. David Hockney is synonymous with sunny days by the swimming pool, thanks to his 1960s depictions of Los Angeles. But his repertoire goes further than those vibrant canvases, with photographic and digital work adding to his recent output. The Pompidou Centre here in Paris is now showing a full retrospective of the British artist's work, and it's a resounding success, with more than 6,000 visitors every day. Charles Pellegrin takes a look. 
Not a person in sight in this frame. Just a large splash of turquoise water. This is the painting that made David Hockney a household name for art enthusiasts around the world. Its vibrant colors and photographic quality are one of a kind, and proof that Hockney had created a unique visual universe. That was in 1967. I wasn't a person who looked at the past that much. I live in the now, uh, but this exhibition makes me see what I've done, and I see they're quite powerful, yes. For about 30 years now, Hockney has been living on and off in Los Angeles. When he's in Paris, the media can't get enough of him. The 80-year-old British painter is one of the few remaining stars of the pop art movement. His British take on the American dream in the 1960s resulted in these idealized vignettes of Californian life. He's always thought of his work as a celebration, as something positive. His work has never shied away from deliberately seducing its audience. When he arrived on the West Coast, Hockney discovered a proud gay community, eager to live out in the open. His work tells the story of his relationships with men who are often also his models. You could say that in his work there's a sort of genie that inspires him, and that genie is Eros. It's true that there is a powerful erotic urge throughout his catalogue. In the span of his 50-year career, Hockney has kept reinventing himself. But the Paris retrospective shows one common thread, his love of life. Next to a painter who Picasso called the father of us all, Paul Cezanne's work is said to have pushed Impressionism to Cubism and laid the foundations for 20th century art. Perhaps best known for his luminous landscapes and still lives, Cezanne was also a master portrait artist. The Musée d'Orsay is currently showing a collection of those pieces, portraits of the artist's friends, relatives and himself, painted throughout his life. François Wiebel has the story. An angsty 23-year-old who spent his days writing violent poetry. This is Paul Cézanne's very first self-portrait, painted after a photograph. Already his unique style stands out. This is a fascinating one because he's given himself a frightening look with bloodshot eyes, a furrowed brow and these greenish hues that really underline the difference between painting and photography. Cézanne painted portraits his whole life, mostly friends and relatives. His father, a banker who never accepted his son's career path. Here, his sister. And his uncle, Dominique, who often posed in all sorts of costumes. Cézanne went through what he'd later call his couillard period, applying paint in thick layers, shaping faces with a palette knife like a bricklayer spreading cement. He combines coats of dark colors with lighter hues, a revolutionary technique in the 19th century. The Couillard method is all about thickness, sculpting the paint. We're halfway between sculpture and painting, and that's what creates depth, rather than the shading effects that were used until now. Cézanne was desperate to reshape the way faces were painted. He soon abandoned this method and returned to a lighter touch, but he continued to express texture through the paint itself, like in this portrait of his wife Hortense Fiquet. He painted her 29 times, only she would agree to pose for hours without moving a muscle. At the end of his life, the artist set up his studio in Paris and painted locals, farmers, even his gardener, old men like himself, who had toiled the land in his beloved Provence. In his final self-portrait, beneath his beret, Cézanne's gaze seems peaceful at last. Now to Paris's Philharmonic for the Jamaica Jamaica exhibition. The show is Europe's largest showcase yet of the rich cultural and artistic heritage of the Caribbean island. From ska to reggae and dance hall, the installation aims to open visitors' eyes and ears to Jamaica's vast and diverse music scene. Let's hear from the show's curator. 
If we spoke about Jamaica and its reggae or sound system, then I'd be delighted, but we don't speak about those things. People just focus on the cliches like smoking weed and that all the music sounds the same. It's really irritating because it's not true. This show represents a sort of odyssey to break those cliches and unveil Jamaica's rich musical and artistic culture. And if you want to tune in to Jamaica's music scene, that exhibition is running until August 13th. Finally, there's a chance to travel through time and space at the Cité des Sciences this summer, thanks to the interplanetary voyagers Valerian and Laureline. The comic book stars are also making a splash on the big screen, thanks to Luc Besson's adaptation of the story. But this exhibition allows visitors to get an insight into the science as well as the fiction. Taking an expert look at the flora and the fauna that the two heroes encounter in their escapades, the show also provides some virtual reality experiences for wannabe time travellers. Remember to check out our website and you can also keep up with Encore on social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.